All right, uh, this is the boys. Wow. I'm um, uh, this time I, we asked Garland Pamarino to come and talk to us about uh, some really interesting voter stuff you guys are going to like. And uh, so he's got two different presentations. Okay, there you go, Pat. Now, Garland's really loud. We're probably going to. I'm going to stop. I'm going to get the microphone. Um, so, uh, no, I'm going to follow the camera and see that. I got, just, I got two presentations. So, we did the, we did the two, a couple of three. Um, the subjects are destroying the integrity of uh, local and verifiable, audible voting, which is done now, right now. And uh, the second presentation, um, I think it has to do with the job happening. Make sure to not. If, if anyone, um, should anyone that's willing, should be able to run for office uh, on, a, on an equal condition, on an equal condition with all other uh, candidates. So that's what we're we'll talking about in the second. Okay. Is this okay now? Can everybody get all right? Are you good? Okay. Let me, I'll take the step off this way. I don't know. I need to kind of stay on the computer. But I don't know how to keep turning my back to you. So, um, you may remember the famous quote, uh, those who cast the votes control not the those who count the votes control everything. Uh, Joseph Stalin was attributed um, to that quote, and uh, that's a little bit about what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, so, uh, our organization, Voter Act, uh, we are a nonpartisan, nonprofit, all volunteer organization, not a one seat bridges, dedicated to scoring the state of Georgia election. Uh, nobody makes it down. So our focus is basically to ensure that you're going to report accurately, and now it's also to try to open that down uh, so that uh, anybody can run for office. Uh, that's been uh, a recent development we've had. And supporters expand the political spectrum. This is kind of interesting, I think, to know, uh, because we have not only the two party groups, a lot of conservative groups, but also the progressives. I have a progressive team and a big supporter of that. The Libertarians, the Green Party, the Constitution Party, which I don't remember of. Uh, the Madison Court members, the Law Law supporters have been fantastic for us uh, for years. Even the grassroots Georgia Democrats and a lot of other conservative critters. This is an issue that's thinking of many and by and large. Uh, yeah. When, when they first said they would know that they right. So, uh, but our detractors, our adversaries, are the leadership of the Democrat and Republican parties. And they have prevented anything from going forward. I think y'all are kind of familiar with that. So I'm preaching to the choir that way. So what is wrong with the current voting method? That's the, truth, the first question that you might want to know and have to Well, uh, you as a voter, cannot verify that the selection that you saw on the screen that actually recorded on the ballot of record that is uh, in, the, in the computer. They actually did it in the ballot of record, I'm going to be honest with you. But that's a whole other subject. No election official can audit the totals to make sure that these machines count it uh, correctly. They can only check off and say, yes, the voting machine said that we got the kind of number of votes. There's no way to hide that. And there's no evidence that uh, is stored of voting intent. So there's no way to recount the reds because there's nothing to recount. They just reprint the previous unverifiable results. And we've had a couple of questions up here compared to the past. So basically, the nutshell of all this is that all the errors are now virtually unprecedented statewide because the new conditions may run. So the, the fundamental problem is that the, um, the, the chain of custody has been broken between the voters and their ballot. Whereas you used to be able to verify the ballot. Now you cannot because you know, nobody even knows what the ballot of the record is. The votes go to the cars and also to the machines, then they go on to the TV. Um, 
the man who owned the store. So there's a lot of chain of custody breaking. There's also in token of there's also a chain of custody breaking because the prison workers can ensure that the voters are being put into the total of the county and might have the county uh, representatives to ensure that that the voters are being appropriate uh, directly in the state level. It all the verification comes top down. So the chain is no one no one does. So there's a lot of uh, chain of custody breaking in the current system. Um, now, here's the interesting part. This is probably the most important side. This added this. I didn't have it at the Chief Party presentation in North Wilton. Um, and, and I realized I didn't need to have this one. Because you have to understand the state's argument. This is, uh, the state will say, well, these machines have internal bodies capabilities. The ballot images can be reproduced from the data. Well, there's a couple of problems there. First of all, the data is proprietary, so you uh, can't, nobody can see it, and you can't get a copy of it. Um, but the audit kit is an internal system, they're not independent. The law requires them to have an independent audit kit. So there's no guarantee that that is being reproduced is what the photograph is going to do for because the image is reproduced after the votes have been recorded and could have been corrupted. So the idea here is that the audit is both recording mechanism. To do that, you have to have an audit trail established before you record the vote, not after, because the recording mechanism is going to record it on collector. So the whole objective is, and this is pretty fundamental in the computer system, but you establish that audit trail ahead of time and uh, there's a couple of different ways of getting into what we're talking about on um, how that should be done. So there's a lot of uh, solutions that you can conduct the election by paper ballot like other countries do. Uh, the legislature is very much an optical scan. Uh, a lot of them are going to go down to that very cost effective and they're going to solve all these problems. Um, and, but the electronic machines, the way to do this if you had electronic machines would be what we call very verified paper body trail. So the way that works is, and these machines did exist in 2002, um, we lost it, but the, 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 the ballot comes up behind the glass, voter verifies it's safe and yes, it's not, if it's not, they uh, install a voter if it's yes, then that is cut, goes into a ballot box, is retained as a system of records for the vote as the vote is verified. So it can be done electronically, it can be done optical scan. Two different vendors can uh, those types of machines in uh, 2002 with the Broncos, however, they did not purchase because they were not very well connected to the down the capital. And uh, we'll get into a little bit about that later. Now, it might be good that there's been a lot of pressure with U.S. elections. I'm uh, just going to touch on this quickly. And um, uh, I'm going to focus mostly on Georgia. But you uh, might recall some folks that voted in the past and went in and voted for um, Cynthia Rose and Sharon Handel and the Chiefs chose Harry Reid. Uh, the North Carolina GOP grabbed a suit for uh, a similar type of television there in North Carolina. Um, in 2006, there was a, 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 a race down in uh, Florida, which was for um, Captain Harrison's seat, and they had a 13% black ballot of 18,000 and 9,000, and a very popular contested race down there between Buchanan and Jennings. Um, not likely that 18,000 people didn't vote that race. And then, uh, basically, how many of you folks here remember the Alvin Green story in South Carolina? Okay, Alvin Green, I did a lot of work on this one. Uh, Alvin Green was declared the winner by a 60 to 40% margin on the unverifiable electronic votes. They have a different vendor that's going to be unverifiable. Vic Ball actually won the absentee ballot count by 55 to 45% margin. So the same people in the same prison, for some reason, they voted absentee voted for Vic, but they voted under and all the other votes out of Green. Now, that alone would be so bad, except for the fact that Alan Green had no website, he had no campaign, he had no fundraisers, he had no paid ads, he had no speeches, no state tours, no party events, and no yard signs. And he pulled in uh, a situation of the in the U.S. Senate. But, more 
important to you is that the same thing is happening here in Georgia. Now, not too many people that since the elections had were implemented, these machines were implemented in 2002. In 2002, right here in neighboring County, 3,256 test votes were recorded in the live election results. Now, Clyde County caught that error and corrected it uh, after, um, I think they did certify the election. Um, but they, they did catch that error, but it didn't happen. Now, you're talking about two slots, and this is now this here in Georgia Park. In Cobb County, we the 2005 Cobb Squads. Uh, and I think that bill was really defeated, it was going down, uh, uh, it was pretty much had been defeated before the Senate Peace Accord to 2011. And then we heard a lot of that transmission difficulties and all kinds of problems, and all of a sudden, the folks had to start to reverse. And in basically, uh, after all was said and done, they found 285 blank voter ballots in an election that was only decided by 114 votes. And it was the only thing on the ballot. So what Kennesaw uh, State and some of us tried to say was, well, yeah, the people went in, only on the ballot, decided to register the vote, get the card, stick it in the machine, and then decide that they were not going to vote. So, again, that was a pretty highly contested, uh, highly contested election. And um, it, it's hard to believe that people were going in and not actually vote. So, but it happened again in 2011. Cause flaws, same thing again. Uh, 95 blank voted ballots in an election that was decided by 79 votes. There was a nine point difference in the mailing ballots. They verified the mailing ballots, and even for that, uh, the spots would have been defeated. However, the unverified electronic votes get the two spots victory, and now Cobb County residents have approximately uh, over, over, I think it was a million dollars. Uh, it was over a million dollars in these two spots that we made it set, uh, based on this kind of emergency. Uh, but uh, I think I missed the other one that I wanted to tell you about. Um, in, uh, in 2010, I don't know if you remember the uh, it was a U.S. Supreme Court law, uh, and Tammy Atkins, who also did not campaign, pulled in 733,000 votes in the U.S. Supreme Court race. She did lose to the, in the, in the uh, election uh, in the runoff. However, she also, just like Alan Green, had no campaign. Uh, didn't return any media requests, didn't even register for contact information with the Secretary of State and any register. No campaign whatsoever. 2010, in the general election, she pulled in 733,370 votes. So I um, forgot to mention that. Uh, but that's not all that happened. Oh, I actually did have a I got to hit on myself there. Sorry about that. Um, in here, uh, test votes were also recorded here in Lowndes County. Lowndes County certified electoral 947 test votes in it. They blame the technician. Uh, that's a long story in itself. I won't go into that one for the sake of time. Uh, had a lot, of, a lot of questions in 2002, uh, but we did find out in our lawsuit to the Georgia Supreme Court in the 2002 election, uh, the machines were patched. They were patched early, they were not research high, um, and uh, that was a liberal and the outdated mission from Professor Gary Williams who oversaw the, the actual implementation machines in 2002. Uh, another very disturbing uh, incident happened in Douglas County in 2008. Um, literally, this is not going to believe this one, but the board, election board member who took the votes from the server, all 25,000 as Douglas County election day votes, took them home in a spreadsheet, reviewed them overnight, and brought it back the next day and got the uh, 
the contract to enter the votes on the spreadsheet into the gym server before Douglas County actually produced the election results. It's amazing. Now, this is not me talking. This was in the Inspector General's report for the Secretary of State. They actually um, came up with this report. They found it. We pointed this out at the state election board number, um, and uh, basically they never considered this issue, but they did find the county election for the supervisor of a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. Actually, didn't find her; it just got in front of the county on some other issues. But this one went up largely unreported and unconsidered by the entire state election board. It's right about what this entire point out. So how did all this happen? Just, uh, just really quickly give you some background. Uh, and, and this will be kind of interesting because you'll understand the politics of it. So. In 2002, Secretary of State Kathy Cox signed this $54 million uh, contract about the voting machines. And did not produce an independent audit trail of the votes cast, and that was required by the law at the time. Uh, Ray Cobb, we got Ray under oath, he was the former director of the US here in the century. He admitted that the machines had no evil on the body trail. Um, it's not, this was not an accident. Uh, Kathy Cox was born by the Fulton County Elections Chief, uh, uh, State Senator Rusty Paul. The, I, I had emails that they had indicated under oath uh, that I had written um, in, in the general public. They were, they were just integrated with complaints and concerns before they purchased these machines. But she went ahead with that purchase anyway. And um, basically, she did not even control that uh, into a lot of information uh, in the Voting Commission report. Uh, there was a, a lot of people in her RFP to the vendors that that was taken out because there was a requirement for any kind of issue in the reports. But, as I mentioned earlier, the voting machines, the legal voting machines were well connected because Kathy Cox's former boss was Louis Nancy. Louis was the lobbyist for the voting machines and the legal. Now, this is an interesting story, but now we're going to see how it's really fresh in both ways. So Nancy went ahead and formed uh, a partnership with, with uh, Bruce Bowers, um, the son of Michael Bowers, who was the former Attorney General Republican, Bruce uh, Bullock, and of course, that's the former Secretary of State. Um, so you've got uh, you know, a very popular Democratic uh, former office holder and a very popular Republican former office holder. And they formed this lobbying firm called Nancy Bowers. Well, actually, it was Michael's son. He was beautiful and everything. So they've got both sides of the political spectrum covered. If it's Democratic to, to, to uh, Nancy, it was Republican, they did the battle. So Karen Handel came along in 2006, and she said she was going to fix it. Um, and I was actually a big supporter of her at that time um, because she could eloquently explain exactly what this problem was better than I could. And she put together a white paper uh, and knew exactly what they were going to the problem. So I was able to find that I could actually convince some Democrats to cross over and vote for her in the 2006 uh, election because Bill Biden had opposed it. She was running against me. Uh, but Karen basically along the way ended up taking uh, a lot of money from you know, the Dallas family was very, very, very big support of ours, and she acknowledges this publicly. And uh, eventually, when she was elected, she installed a Matthew Dallas partner, Rob Smith, as her deputy, the Secretary of State, and Mr. Bob eventually went on to fund uh, and help raise her money for the University of California. She almost went back in 2010. So that's, I thought you were right there, but that shows you what we're up against. When you've got a lot of these things that it's all both sides of the political spectrum, it really makes sense that the government uses the grassroots person and not a lot of facts. So the 
along and Brian, you know, Brian was appointed uh, Secretary of State. Um, and um, it was actually the cover for the second choice, but that's a different story. Um, in his first debate, Brian Kemp said, this was at the um, Georgia Special Alliance uh, over in Sandy Springs, and he said that if the legislature would introduce a bill he, to fix this problem, he would lead the charge. So I was very excited about that because I knew what was going to happen in about two weeks. And two weeks later, uh, sure enough, HB 1215 was introduced to the bill now for the introduced that bill. It was a bipartisan bill, as all of us are, all the members are not on the bill. And um, basically, as soon as that happened, we completely flipped and refused to support it because it cost too much. Said they were because of the cost. And now we do have a study from Maryland. Uh, and just so you know, Maryland is pretty almost identical to Georgia, and they voted $137 million to get rid of the new commission in the hospital. Uh, long story there with the government. Uh, actually, I think Madison Ford sent this story out just recently last year to maybe yesterday. But um, the government actually stopped it, and they still have not implemented the machines yet. They haven't done a website or whatever it's all not. So that's another story up there. But basically, they concluded after the governor uh, uh, impeded the, the replacement machine, the legislature did another step. They already went to the field and said it was terrible, and the machines were terrible. But the legislature did another story that showed that the cost would be totally recovered before election cycle. So there is the you know, return on investment for uh, going, say, for example, to optical scheme is only uh, approximately four election cycles. So the eight years, uh, anything under two years is considered a very good return on investment by any investor in our own business. So to uh, Secretary Kemp did establish an election advisory council. This is a conglomeration of about 16 folks, mostly Democrats and Republicans around, um, as you might expect. And they went around the town hall this year conducting, uh, I'm sorry, went around the state conducting town halls. And the people got to express their concerns. Well, guess what the two top issues were? Um, they were, uh, one, uh, implementing their level letter, and two, opening the ballot so they didn't have to open up ballots. Uh, they were just bombarded by those two issues. There were also some other issues going on, like um, ensuring that uh, a candidate is qualified to be on the ballot. So I think we can probably relate to that one. So that's where we are. So the question here is, what can we do about this? Well, I'm going to move on to the ballot access in a minute. But I'll stop for the questions here. But basically, um, what, what can you do? The most important thing I think you do right now is to contact these election advisory council members, which will be on this um, slide, and they're actually in the presentation in the DVD, um, and try to get some support for them to make a recommendation to restore the integrity of Georgia election time, coming up with some new equipment. So if they can recommend that we need to do this, and then Secretary Kemp, who is opposing this and will continue to oppose it, will have more pressure on him to, to do something about this. We can also get HB 1215 reintroduced, however, if the Secretary is not in favor on it, and then the legislature isn't going to pass it, um, as sure as he does. So there's probably not uh, much. So that was that would be what I would recommend to do for this particular subject at this time. And I'd like I know this will probably generate a lot of questions, so I think I'll stop and ask if you have any questions on this before we go to the ballot access. So that's going to be very, very important topic for you too. And if you all would like this list, I'll email it out to everybody if you want this list. Everybody want it? Yes. 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 Okay. Well, I'll just read would you back it up one slide? I'll bring it down further about the last something about Kim. I didn't read it up. Uh, yeah, so Brian, I think it was about Brian established the election advisory council, which was 16 folks, and then he uh, 
um, that council was presenting this uh, public comment, and basically those two issues came to the forefront. The majority of the comment of the comments were to get verify the law of the and only the ballot for all of um, anybody in the office. Is that recent with this? Yes, yes, this was just this year. This is that they just concluded the last session last time. The last ten months. And, and this presentation, is that on the website too? So we, we have some ammunition to, to talk to them about it? I'd be glad to, um, to you know, Jack's got it, so if you um, Yeah, because you know, we'll up, yeah. Okay. The, the reason I'm asking is they have a tendency to back up on us so we can continue to pull these things that you have graciously found out for us and, and put the feet to the fire constantly. Yeah, nothing I have is proprietary, so feel free to you know, just distribute it. Uh, only your votes are proprietary, you can't do them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't Even if you go to court. That's their own thing. In 2002, you said the, the computerized machines that we have now were statewide. Yes, they implemented, I'm sorry, I should have said that at the beginning, they implemented these labor machines statewide. So it used to be, uh, every county could, could do its own plan. But they implemented a statewide system. Now, prior to 2002, about 82% of Georgia voted on verifiable optical scan or punch card systems. Once they implemented these machines statewide, the percentage of auditability went from 82% to 0%. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Do you have any idea what happened to the optical scan equipment that one of our cameras had locked? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we have asked that question, but we don't really know where that equipment is. <laughs> Uh, that's a great question to ask. Could it vary by county by county? We didn't track it at the county level. Is it owned by the county? Uh, yes, yes. Good point, Jack. So that, the, the county owned their equipment. That was another reason why they were able to get the district group because the state now owns. Uh, well, I think the state owns the equipment. Well, no, I'm sorry. I think I'm not sure how they do it, but the county has to maintain it. I'm not really sure how to do it. We didn't do optical scan in the precinct. We actually did optical scan in the county election. They, they took the ballots back to the county election. Mm -hmm. They said the charity that all the mm -hmm. scan was done. And, and, and what we're saying about optical scan, even dealing with optical scan, you still have to have an audit procedure to make sure that the calculators are county correct. Because right now, if you remember the recount uh, in, in uh, the mayor's race in Atlanta and Roswell, so when they recounted, they just rescanned the balance. So if the tabulator had an error in it on election day, it's in there, it's going to be producing a recount. So we told them, you know, you need to do a hand count when you do a recount. Because if you, you can hand count one race as fast as you can, uh, running through the scanner. It actually can probably get faster because the scanner takes a few seconds from now. I can test one other time. That's okay. I, I did uh, uh, Citizen Cassie was the lobbyist for Valor. I don't, you know, 10 years later you could almost say, uh, you know, we, there's a better version now and that's what we're going for. I mean, I just, I don't understand why, you know, if it was like the next year that he decided that redo it and it be a, a finish on their record or whatever. Uh, but, you know, 10 years later, you would think that that would be a problem, uh, you know, the fact that they bought the machine 10 years ago and now they want a better machine. Yeah, that, that, that's a great point. Um, because uh, after two years, these machines are, are reaching their, the end of their useful life. So now we can get to the point of talking about uh, then being in the place, uh, not for the what I call the right reasons, just for just for the age of mind. And part of what the Maryland study talked about was that very thing that they considered the age of the machines in their in their calculations as well. So that's really good questions. Anybody else? Just what did you say about the governor's there? Because of the deal. Did you mention the 
Hoje nós vamos para a casa muito amigável do Fudeu, a gente, que viu o Carl Lanzé. Oh, we came again to the point of the government. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, basically, uh, what I, the point I was making there was that the Valor's family uh, was deeply involved in, in the campaign, as was Rob uh, uh, Sanchez, who was Valor's partner. What's keeping um, Brian Kemp from pushing this, do you know, with the agenda? I, I hate to, to speculate, but basically, going back to the first slide, the leadership of the Democrat Republican Party was opposed to us. Um, and it, it really, it was kind of interesting because when the Democrats put these machines in, the Republicans were our friends. Uh, Tom Price actually was trying to help uh, help us with their bill, and he had a lot of good work with Then all of a sudden, the Republicans gained the, the majority, and we were excited. They were never going to do something. Well, all of a sudden, they completely flipped on us, and it was the Democrats who now said, well, we need to do something. So that's why I say that the leadership of the parties just really don't want our people voting in Georgia. And that's really what it goes down to. You know, if you can control the machines, you can control, you could conceivably, not saying that it actually has happened, because we don't really know for sure, but you can conceivably control one person, the outcome of any election is dead. And, and, and I'm talking about the program, not necessarily an election Yes, sir. Two or three folks there, you have blank ballots, and you say the die hole says, how do you get blank ballots? Yeah, okay, that's another great question. How do you get blank ballots? So I'm talking about totally blank ballots. I'm not talking about a hundred ballots. So you might want to go in and you might want to vote for somebody uh, and file them in six places, but you just got to go to the candidates and wonder if you don't want to vote. That's a legitimate hundred ballots. Nobody's going to question that. But in the case of the cops' laws, in both cases, the entire ballot was blank. Which Steve O should have prevented. I am not opinion you should be able to cast a blank ballot. You know, you say you're very sorry, uh, you're not um, But so the entire ballot was blank and the squads were the only thing on the on the on the issue, the only race on the ballot. So the people had to come in, get the card, register, take the card to the machine, put it in the machine, and then pass the vote with nothing on. Both come, both times. The, that kind of vote determined $1.4 billion of taxes in the people of Cotton It's amazing. They just had enough votes. It just turned out that, you know, we don't know why they're a blank or, or, or whatever, but that kind of. I know. I'm just going to say. But thank you. Thank you. I've had to attend it. I know, I understand. Well, this, I want to say what Barlow's talking about, and get your question for a second, is this is where we need to hold our representatives accountable, going, okay, folks, what are you going to do about this? You're here to represent me. What are you going to do? You're going to stand up and say something? We know there's a problem. But we, unless we call and push them, tell our friends, tell our neighbors, I mean, it, this is, we're really getting into some really soup here, folks. And if we don't do this, nothing's going to happen. We're going to have the same old, same old every single time, and we get what we get. But it's encouraging people. I think people finally are mad now. They're awake. They weren't awake before. How many people, uh, I'm on a committee with Cherokee County, actually, overseeing the board of commissioners with the budgets. This is, we're getting into some real dicey stuff right now because there's an aquatic center that they passed with a bond. All right? So Tuesday, we're going to ask them to actually officially put it on hold. We got on hold for two weeks. We're going to ask them to put it on hold, period, until they find a way to get us out of this where we can either use the money to pay the debt back or whatever. But unless we do this kind of stuff, and it's not comfortable, and they're not comfortable with us being there, let me tell you, they are not comfortable. The ones that are comfortable are the ones that are working for because they're not afraid to say something the right thing. Charlie's Burke. Go on, Charlie's Burke. Yes. He's our favorite. Yes. So this is one of those kind of people that that's why she's there. She's there to represent us. She's not afraid of these folks. But we have too many of them that are way too timid. And to do stuff like what Carlos talking, this affects every single person in the state of Georgia. So we have to push this thing. We've got to push bottom up. You know, let's do, let's do what they're doing. 
what the, <laughs> the other side's doing. Push bottom up, and we can do this. So, you get it. And, and the leadership is, is uh, they're, they're scared. That's what I, I love about this thing. The two players, I think it's progressive. <laughs> they are scared. Yeah, I mean, they, you, you've got their attention, so what's happening? I think John did a question. Thank you, Ron. Uh, I'm, I'm slight, I think that Mr. Wallace was referencing. We also have an example of where uh, 3,200 votes, 3,200 test votes, I think you said, were counted in the live election. Now, but you said that they corrected that. And I'm wondering how it is, how, how did they identify which of those ballots needed to be removed? Oh, okay. <laughs> so so what what happened? Great. How did they get the ballots? So what what happened there? The only way they would have caught them, the only way they can catch them, um, uh, is that fact that the poll book totals did match the official uh, results on the on the machines. So they realized in this case the 1,300 uh, difference that they had 3,200 extra votes that went uh, on the roll. On the, they were over there, they were over there, they were over there, they were over Then they realized that they had gotten the test votes in, um, and they were probably able, I, I believe they were able to isolate those and, and pull them out, uh, isolate those as test votes. Um, so I think when they recalculated, it was probably correct. Um, but yeah, that's that's a great that's a great point. This happened again in Lowndes County in uh, 2008 with 947 votes. This was a bizarre situation because rather than just correct the problem, Lowndes County didn't catch it. It went to the Secretary of State's office, Secretary of State's office, uh, West Taylor's office, and his former elections director. So they caught it, sent it back to the county. The county uh, election board uh, um, supervisor, who was the manager, panicked. So rather than just say, oops, right now we made a mistake, take a slap on the wrist, she panicked and tried to blame the voting machine technician for the error. The voting machine technician, when she tested the machines, well, the voting machine te technician wasn't even present on election night when they put the test votes into the machine that were on the car. She was not present, she was not responsible for the reconciliation or the reporting or anything else. But they tried to blame this uh, girl, I think it was Laura Gallegos, there were a whole bunch of stuff on this, on the website about this. And uh, Laura uh, went through absolute hell. Basically, she ended up losing the property, she got fired, um, all sorts of stuff. It's an amazing, amazing story. So uh, my friend John Fortune defenders democracy, he said, you know, you need to take a look at the story, and I'm just kind of blew it off a lot. And then finally I met with Laura, I was coming back to Florida, I was talking about Austin, and, and, and she showed me what happened. I said, okay, we're gonna have to do something. So I spent about 100 hours in that case over down there counting the state election board. We sent uh, stuff out to the news media about that case. Uh, Madison Forum distributed a lot of stuff on it. And we just basically put that out to the point where they could not, uh, they, they couldn't handle And she eventually got off. They, they actually found it. I had to go down to the arrest for a witness. Um, I had to file an uh, administrative hearing. She ended up getting off before they even called me because the judge started a rat down there. And um, he basically, it, it's kind of a long story. But the next show is they were going to uh, persecute this this lady that has nothing to do with the with the, the problem. And I thought I'd share that story. I got a little bit off. Um, and, and she's no longer, she's actually no longer working. And the, the election, the Lowndes County Election Board member, uh, um, or the, she had a supervisor, she's still there at County Election. She got a thousand dollar fine for making this stuff. But she's still there, and the Douglas County Supervisor is still there at County Your Votes again in 2010, probably will be in 2012. There's no accountability in this uh, state. And uh, Brian Kent was involved in both of those cases and could have taken the correct action. But did not. Thank you.
I know there's a lot of talk the year or so after the current voting machines were, were installed to that it would be somewhat easy and cheap to retrofit a printout on what's the, what was the final outcome of that? Yes, sir. You, 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 got, you got some great questions over here. So, as you mentioned, the voting machines already have a printer on them. They already have a printer that can print a verifiable ballot right out of it. So we proposed about four years ago, we said, look, we will write the software to make these print a verifiable ballot, and we'll give you the software. I mean, we've got enough technical expertise to print all these things. We'll give, you, we'll give the state the software, and you can just write it for free, and we can all have verifiable ballots, it won't cost you anything. So the vendor, Evolve, said, no, no, you can't put third-party software on that machine. We can support that. And the state said, okay, we can't do it. So that's how we got out and said, we could have this for free. Another great question. Yes, that's it. That's it. Great. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to slip on this. Is, I, I know that's a very intriguing subject. We'll slip over to another subject. This will only be about 15 minutes. And this will be near and dear to your heart, too. Uh, it has to be about that. Here's the concept. Anybody who is a Tea Party member, uh, 912 member, con Constitution Party, Green Party, Libertarian, doesn't matter, anybody should be able to run for any office on an equal basis with every other candidate. Is that fair? I mean, does anybody, anybody, would anybody find any fault for that? Okay, we can't do that in Georgia. And that's the other issue that we're working on. <coughs> so, um, what's wrong with the ballot access thing? So Georgia, we can't do that because Georgia has the most restrictive access, ballot access laws in the entire nation for candidates to get on the ballot. Um, they're 10 times more restricted than the national average of all other states combined in certain races. 10 times more restricted than the national average of all other states combined say for U.S. House, the state house, the state house. No congressional candidate has ever qualified to get on the ballot in a regular Georgia election since these laws were implemented in 1943. And they were implemented specifically to keep people off the ballot. Um, basically, most of the 70% of the races today are uncontested in the state house and the state of the Senate. So there's been a lot of difficulties in, in petitioning. Um, Basically, as the population has increased, um, there's, it's roughly about five, you have to get five times more of signatures than you did in 1943. Citizens don't want to give you signatures because they fear identity theft uh, to begin with. And then all those signatures have to be validated if somebody does run by the counties of the states. Um, and uh, that costs money and takes time to validate all these signatures. And a lot of times, Valid signatures get thrown out for for little little or no reason. Um, the uh, handwriting change differences over time. They don't quite match. Like 